Okay, fine, I'm pulling the pin on this topic. As most of my subscribers know, I took a look back on Sonic Riders a little while ago and I fell in love with the game. The gameplay, the characters, the graphical style, they all mesh together so well and I can't get enough of it. That being said, of course this subseries of racing extravaganzas has another two installments. And here, we're knocking out the sequel. This is my first time playing Zero Gravity basically ever. I did have it on my Wii when I was younger, but I wasn't very good at it, so I had a fresh start going back in. Well, except my expectations from the previous Riders game were also in my mind, but I was willing to see what changes this game brought to the formula. And so, what's the verdict? Allow me to explain why I believe Sonic Riders Zero Gravity is an almost worthy sequel. Just like my original Riders video, I want to start off talking about the gameplay. Most people who have played Sonic Riders know just how overwhelming its mechanics could be, on top of just how much there is to learn, and that's often what turned people away from the game. But Zero Gravity goes out of its way to not only simplify the mechanics, but also make the game accessible overall. To begin, this game absolutely took my breath away for one singular reason. My biggest issue with Sonic Riders was the total and utter lack of a tutorial, and yet the very second you click on story mode in Zero Gravity, obviously Obviously, the mode newbies will most likely choose, you are greeted with the option to play through a tutorial. This may not sound like a lot, and trust me, normally it's not a lot, but for the Sonic Riders series, it's an absolute godsend. The tutorials are great at teaching the players individually just how the game is played, and so, let's follow its lead, shall we? The first mechanic, and the one that has basically been untouched from the original Sonic Riders, is the starting line mechanic. I'm very happy to see it return because I just think that it's a really cool and fun mechanic that adds a lot to the start of a race. So, that's really it in terms of things that have been untouched from the original Sonic Riders. Moving on, however, let's talk about the trick system. In the original Sonic Riders, tricks were performed by a series of actions. Firstly, you needed to charge your jump to get as much airtime as possible, followed by constant swift movements of the analog stick to do as many flips as you could before reaching the ground. And finally, you had to make sure you landed on your board to get both a speed and air boost. In ZG, however, the process has been, well, simplified to say the least. The way tricks are performed in Zero Gravity is all about gauging your distance from the edge of a ramp and pressing the jump button. Make no mistake, there is a sense of satisfaction that comes with pushing your luck by seeing just how far you can go before reaching the edge of a ramp before pressing the jump button, but it quickly loses its gusto when it requires far less skill. With no jump charging mechanic, manual tricks, or even something as easy as manually landing, it sends all of the variety right out the window. Each ramp is no different from the last, as whenever you get the hang of performing super jumps, there's essentially no way to not have an at least great jump. The only real sense of variety is the texture and placement of the ramps, which themselves don't enhance the gameplay at all. Secondly, the air meter is entirely gone. Which on the one hand, I feel is worse, because like the trick mechanic, it added a whole new layer of skill between good and great players. But on the other hand, I think it's definitely better in terms of breaking into the mainstream racing genre. Every other kart racer practically ever has never had to deal with a gas meter of sorts, and Ryder's lack of clarity on how to refill it in the original made it a struggle for new players, so removing it I think was better as far as getting more people into the game. Its replacement, however, is the gravity meter. The better your tricks, then the more points you have, and the more you can use it on gravity-based abilities, which I'll talk about later. As someone who's played enough Riders to be numb to the air meter, I personally enjoy its presence, since it forces the player to get better to keep it full. But I also understand that it was an intimidating aspect of the overall gameplay system, and by removing it, players would still be enticed to learn and get better as long as the game was fun. The last substantial change was the drift mechanic. For context, the characters in both Riders and Zero Gravity control beautifully, and are quite possibly the only racing characters I can properly control without drifting every second I'm on the track. Which I mainly bring up because the drift in both of these games isn't very important. Originally, yes, it was great for tight corners and abusing the mini boost of speed you got once you released the trigger, but now the only purpose of the drift is to hit 90 degree turns. This is somehow both a largely negligible loss, while simultaneously being such a boneheaded decision. The lack of a drift would have been fine enough, sort of weird, but fine. But no, they instead decided to regulate it into something that is entirely situational and can only be used in set parts of the track because to use it outside of those areas would do nothing but slow you down. And while true, I do love the graphical effect, it's such a strange gameplay decision that, while it's by no means a plus, I wouldn't consider it a strict negative either, since you could easily argue that the drift was just as situational in the original, but its much smaller presence made it more usable. This is definitely a decision I'm not a huge fan of, but also don't particularly mind since it can be used to ride on walls. Ah uh, yes, now let's cover some of the gravity gameplay within Zero Gravity. 
The drift can be used when going off specific ramps in order to connect to the adjacent wall and ride it as a shortcut. So in the drift's defense, it does have some cool use when it comes to timing those connections. Next up to cover is the gravity dive. This mechanic is only usable in very set destinations on tracks where you press and hold the gravity dive button and you shoot off in a straight line at the cost of some gravity power from the gravity meter. The only benefit from using this is the boost inside very narrow hallways and the occasional shortcut, but for as cool as it looks, to use it outside of those hallways is more often than not futile for passing opponents. Unfortunately, this gimmick does impact every single track design in the game. Although I don't think it's as good as the original riders, I must admit it is still fun in its own way. Now I'll briefly cover the extreme gear. Each gear has a certain number of available upgrades and each one costs a set number of rings. The first thing is often something like a speed boost while the second is the character's special ability. Unlike the first rider's speed, flight, and power characteristics aren't specific to a character, but instead they're specific to an extreme gear. But as I was saying, when you unlock their techniques and unique traits, it's essentially the first rider's game again on how they operate. The only difference is speed characters now have to only jump onto rails and not click it a second time to confirm, unless they're going off a ramp. As for small things that aren't really categorized, the power-ups are just as unimportant as last time, and the boost is now regulated to a power-up, which is one of the dumbest decisions this game made. Certain shortcuts like springs and unique paths are only accessible when characters are running, which only happens when they boost. The boost added such a thrill to the original riders, that a simple compromise could have been instead of losing air, you lose gravity power, and that way you get a boost. Such an easy fix that would have added a whole new layer of fun and strategy. Overall, however, I do enjoy the gameplay of Zero Gravity. I do have my fair share of complaints, but most are small and negligible at best, and they rarely interrupt my joy whenever I'm going into a Grand Prix or just some normal races. The gameplay is definitely a downgrade, but not to the extent that you might have been led to believe. Plus, we'll mention something later on that negates essentially all of these complaints. Now that the gameplay is out of the way, we can cover this game's story, which, just like the gameplay, is not quite on par with the original. The story actually takes itself pretty seriously, not in the sense that it's dark and grim, but instead it actually has a story to tell. The world building around Meteotech and the fact that Sonic and Co. actually live in this futuristic world is extremely refreshing. Not to mention how the Babylon Rogues' ancient Babylonian ancestors are given even more history to their civilization, which is great for even more world building, as well as providing links to the last game and the Arcs of the Cosmos. The plot itself, however, is a huge mess. The Arcs of the Cosmos rarely have any real presence as artifacts, the robot army is a terribly weak antagonistic force with no true leader, Eggman is strangely underused, as in this continuity he has a huge tech empire at his disposal, and yet that is never elaborated on or explained. To be frank, the original game had an extremely goofy Saturday morning feel to it, but in Zero Gravity, the charm and cartoony nature has been dialed back a very considerable amount, making it almost non-existent. Jet and the Rogues are stripped of any real character moments except for Jet, but they only ever emphasize his rivalry with Sonic, and there's so much more to Jet than just his rivalry. The main cast, however, I feel is legitimately well characterized, if not a little shallow, but they do have more than a few times to shine. Specifically, I love how with Knuckles, being a treasure hunter is actually an integral part of his character and ends up moving the plot along. To the game's credit, it does serve as a great sequel in terms of its connections to the original and how it is both a standalone for newcomers, but it is also enhanced with the first game's knowledge. But other than that, there's no real flair here. Although serviceable to children and fans, any general audience member who takes more than a quick second thinking about the story, it falls apart at the seams. Speaking of flair, let's talk about graphics. This game continues to dazzle just as its predecessor did. The graphics, while not as vivid and poppy, still contains a ton of awesome and unique set pieces that simply get better and better. Although, I would say I still prefer the overall track design of the first game in terms of visuals, the more grounded color palette and design doesn't overstep and hurt the game's overall quality and charm here. As for character models, they're ripped straight from the original riders on the GameCube and are relatively untouched in-game, but the cutscenes have changed their textures to be more detailed and I gotta say, I absolutely love it. Although I do slightly prefer the flat colored models, these are a very close second in my eyes because it keeps the base model I love and enhances the detail in ways I can't help but appreciate. This follows through with the overall animations. Although not as up to snuff with the original game's squash and stretch, there's no doubt effort was made here with some good expression and even pretty admirable attempts at replicating Sonic's side mount. As for the CGI, it's great stuff as usual. Now to close things off, let's talk about Zero Gravity's post-game, and it's a tad underwhelming. It still has things like unlockable characters, but the selection isn't as exciting considering two slots are wasted on robots. But on the bright side, Silver and Blaze are here, and seeing them in this art style is a treat. But I must say, 
The extra Sega levels, once again, are the best in the game, and I can't get enough of them. And although not official, in today's day and age, I feel like I have to encourage you all that if you do want to play this game, you should all check out Sonic Riders Regravitified. It makes the gameplay so much closer to the original Riders, which breathes new life into this game, making it such a blast and almost as good as the original. But, like I said, almost is what this game will forever be stuck with in my eyes. Sonic Riders is a sub-series I absolutely love and wish so desperately gets another chance in the spotlight. It fits so masterfully with the characters in the Sonic world, and I firmly believe it's the best way to have Sonic engage in a racing setting outside of another, better attempt at Sonic R. But as we all know, the series never quite took off, and the next entry of the series, Sonic Free Riders, was the nail in the coffin, and I doubt it will ever be revived. That being said, however, the original Sonic Riders remains the best racing game I've ever played. And while this one may take too many steps back in one too many places, that doesn't stop Sonic Riders Zero Gravity from being an almost worthy sequel. Hello everybody, I know that normally I just have my cool sounding dramatic ending and then it cuts to credits, but I just have a quick announcement for here, I have a Patreon. The feedback from you all on my community post led me to believe that this wouldn't do any harm, so it's just here and up and running. If you're interested in checking that out, there is a link in the description, but if you enjoyed this video and the other similar content I make on this channel like that, then please, if you want to see more of this, like, comment, subscribe, all the cool little buttons, because I love talking with the Sonic community about all this stuff. It is just my passion to talk about these games and write essays like this. So if you want to support me in any way, then please uh, just subscribe. And thank you all so much for watching this and any of my other videos, and I will see you in the next one.